Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. We're going to start day six of this war of mine. Everybody suggested keeping Kick the Door Down, so that's the one I'm going to keep. And I think I'm going to be able to use it this round. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pay off the last food so that we are completed with our objective, which will be awesome once we get done with chapter two. So to start day six, let's draw our event card. Man, these events never really give you a break. <laughs> Add two cold to the cold space. We've got two here. That's going to make a total of six cold tokens. Then we have harsh winter. Place this card permanently in the cold space. At the beginning of each morning phase, place two cold here. So I think that takes into effect instead of what's up here on the upper left-hand side of the cards. So we're just going to ga be gaining cold tokens over and over again. That's not good. What I'll do is I'll place that card underneath these cold tokens, and now I think I know exactly what I'm planning on doing during the day phase. So during our day phase, we're going to have Zalata come over here. We're going to have Zalata build another bed. That's going to be four wood and three components. We have a total of four components and two wood left. We're going to have Aritza come over here to this bed, and she's going to take a quick nap. Marin's going to go and poke about, and we're going to put poor old Bruno... <laughs> working on the rubble here. So let's resolve him first. So he will be able to flip this card over. Next round, we'll be able to get rid of this, which will be nice. Aritza will eliminate her fatigue. And Zalata has now built this bed. So now we can have two people next round to take a nap. Last one to go is going to be Marin. We're hoping for a high roll here. Remember, he adds four to his roll. He's got an 8. 8 plus 4 is definitely the 10. So he can get 4 wood or 4 components or a combination of both. So we're definitely going to grab 2 of each. Yeah. Action 2, we're now going to have Marin and Zalata take a quick nap in their each of their own beds respectively. Bruno did such a good job digging through these remnants. We'll have them do it again. We're going to use 5 components and 3 wood right here to have... Uh, Aritza build this simple heater. So let's activate her first. This is going to be nice because now we can take an action here and for each two wood or books, we can discard one cold token. Yes, we're going to need that. Both Marin and Zalata get rid of their fatigue one and they're ready for activation number three. Bruno over here cleans up the rest of the remnants. Thank you so much, Bruno. Unfortunately, he will still have fatigue of one, so he'll not be able to do an action for the third round. But we're also going to use our kick the door down. So we're going to knock this door down and we gain ooh, a mechanical part and a piece of wood. Well, we unfortunately have all the mechanical parts, so we just found a piece of wood. Ugh, I hate when I don't do that right. For the third and final round, we're going to have Aritza come over here and she is going to burn up some books. I mean, we used them for misery before, but now we're going to use them for heat. We're so cold. So that's going to be two books here. And we've got two pieces of wood, so we might as well use them to eliminate two cold tokens. Zalata's next, and she is going to search the furniture. And then lastly, we're going to have Marin poke about. So let's have him go first. Remember, he adds four. We rolled a two, so that's a six. Six, we can get two wood or two components. And I think I'm just going to grab two wood. We're going to burn all of this up and eliminate two cold tokens. But they're just going to come back next round. And last but not least... Let's search our furniture. What do we find? Whoa, lots of stuff. Julie, two books, sweet. A lockpick, two uh, components, and one wood. Holy moly, that's a lot of stuff. So now it's dusk phase. First, everyone needs their water, and we definitely have that because we brought six back from our last um, uh, scavenging. Now everybody needs to eat, and we only have three food. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Bruno the canned food and Zalata and Aritza, the vegetable. And so Marin is simply going to go hungry. He said he's going to take one for the team. I said that's okay, but we got to make sure that he eats because I really don't want him to lose another action. So instead of going to the supermarket, I think this time we're going to go to the church. And that's because we can do a trade action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bunch of things that I think I'm going to be okay trading and see if we can maybe get some stuff that we need. We're going to take the same team we did before, Zalata, Bruno, and Aritza, on our scavenging, leave Marin to protect the base. We're going to bring a pistol, some ammo, an electrical part, a mechanical part, herbs, I got some jewelry, I've got a broken guitar that I think instead of trying to fix, I'm just going to trade away, a filter, 
the broken pistol, because now I've got a regular pistol and a shotgun. And the weapon part, I don't think I need it. The saw blade, because there's bars. Uh, a lock pick, because there's a closed door, it might be locked. And one book. Oh, and I almost forgot, definitely the bandages in case someone gets hurt. Whew, that is a lot of stuff that we're bringing. Don't forget, though, we're going to have to roll for snipers for all three of our characters. We'll start with Salada. She can reroll up to two times. Oh, not going to reroll. Then it's Marin. Or no, Bruno. Sorry, Bruno. Bruno can reroll once. Wow, that's two wounds. Let's definitely reroll once. Come on. Oh my gosh, three wounds. Holy Hannah Banana. I was not ready for that. Oh, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of Bruno, but this is one of my characters, guys. He's going to die. Okay, this is for Zalata. She gets one roll. She takes two wounds. We'll give her this two moon token. Oh my gosh. Well, we can get rid of this card though, but at what cost? I just took five wounds. Well, I decided the church. I don't know why I did that. Well, I know why, because I wanted to do trading for sure. So that means we're going to return six exploration cards to do this trade and see 902. But I just, oh my gosh, you guys, I got to get over the fact that I just took five wounds. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm going to lose half of my exploration cards because this church was at the distant area instead of close because close was still the marketplace. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six left. I'll return these six and let's read 902. There are quite a few people among the ruins of the old church. They're hoping they'll receive something to eat, even just a very meager meal. They bring all their belongings with them. They have with them anything of value, items that have been in their families for years or whatever they've managed to scavenge in the ruined city. When the local priest fails to obtain any ingredients to prepare even the most basic of soups, the people know who to turn to as a last resort. There are several traders nearby who lurk like vultures. They wait for the most desperate of people. You may buy any green and yellow tokens here at a trade commission of two. Oh, well, here I am thinking, okay, the church, maybe we'll be able to get something at a better price. No, we got a trade commission of two. But green and yellow tokens, that's what we need. I honestly... Don't know how I feel about this, but this is what I can do. I've got 29 here, I believe. 10, 20, 22, 24, 27, 28, 29, to their 15, 16, 17, 27. You see how I'm only getting three food? That's because I'm kind of thinking Bruno is done for. And so that means we don't need food for him. <laughs> we probably don't even need the cigarette for him, but just in case, you know, he's not going to, I don't think he's going to die until next round. So we'll, we'll let him have his last cigarette. Okay, got to stay positive. We've had really good luck with our exploration. So let's see if it holds. We've got open space. There is no open space at the, at the church. So we'll draw another exploration card. We have climb up. Return three exploration cards or roll the great comet die for each. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. I am not in the mood to have anybody else taking wounds. I'm going to lose three more exploration cards. That means I only have two left. Wow, this is going to be quick. Okay, let's see what this is. Tough luck. Roll for noise. Well, you guys, there's nothing like starting it off hard. Here's the thing. We're only at a one at least. Yeah, we rolled a three, so we're fine. That means though, this is our last exploration card. Search the furniture. Raise the noise by one and roll for the noise. Definitely doing that. So we're going to raise the noise to two. Let me bring this over. We just have to roll. And you know what? I'm going to use Aritz's ability to put it down to a one. So we just need to roll above a one. And that's a six. Okay, at least we did that over here. Okay. We'll grab our findings deck. And we're doing the furniture. Furniture. We get a book, chems, and herbal meds. Well, we have all the books again. So we just can get herbal meds and chems. We do get to roll for the special findings. So let's see if we find anything. <gasps> that's a nine. We at least found some jewelry. So I guess it's not all, all bad. That's nice, at least. Well, here's our loot. It's not great, but we only had two things that weighed anything. So we're going to bring back two water. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. We have ten inventory with our three uh, characters. That won't be for long because we're going to lose Bruno. But overall, I mean, at least we're getting some components. We can maybe build a stove. We've got some vegetables. So I I'm okay, but... It's still not great. Okay, let's do our night raid. We have Marn with his shotgun. And we will shuffle these up. 
And let's reveal this one. Reality impact. God, I mean, you guys, I've got all these other ones in here, but I keep trying. Oh, man. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with it. Draw a card from the colors deck to determine the color of the script. Then reveal the top card of the Night Raids deck and check the number with that color on it. Oh, okay. I, I didn't mess these up since I shuffled it. So one of these numbers. Let's see what color. We'll grab the color deck. And let's do this one. Yay, black. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is turning sour fast. We're looking at 395. Someone's pounding on the door. One, two, three. It rumbles like the intruder's hitting it with a boulder, but there's no voices, no calling out at all. And then silence. We try to see outside by peering between the planks. We can make out a figure who's either sitting or kneeling by the door, trying to do something. Oh gosh, you guys, this is terrible. We wait, maybe they'll go away, see 1576, or we can't let anybody mess with the door. We open it while holding on to the best weapon we have, ready for a fight. Okay, Marn overall seems like a guy who isn't going to do rash decisions, but this is our house. We've spent all this time fixing it up. I think he would grab 1660. He would not let somebody do this. So he's going to go poke his head out and see what's going on. We open the door. Half a meter from us, a teenage boy is kneeling. He was just about to set fire to a paper bag that's now right beneath our feet. He stuffed it with something. We're going in full force, no question asked. We ask him what this thing is. Oh, man. I don't know. Uh, we've got a shotgun. I I'm going to go straight in. 1378. The boy didn't manage to react. He fell as soon as he was hit on the head. Then we notice a burning bag and saw what was inside. An incendiary charge. We manage to flee deeper into the shelter at the last moment, just in time. The shelter then trembles from the explosion. When we return moments later, we see still burning door frames, scattered equipment, and the remains of the would-be saboteur. As we looked at what was left of the kid in our doorway, a few of his friends jump from behind a parparate across the street and run away. Roll the black die and compare the results with the empathy of each character on the guard space. A result that is equal to or lower than a character's empathy raises their misery by one. We have to roll a six or higher, or Marn's misery goes up by one. That's a six. Somehow he doesn't get depressed by that, because I'm not depressed. Jeez. Okay, we've now brought everything back into the storage. Great. But now we have to draw our fate card. But before that, I'm going to place some bandages on a couple people. So the two people that are hurt are Zolata and Bruno. Here's the thing. Bruno's at a three. So a lot of I've got two bandages. So I think I can save her each round with bandages. So I'm going to just use the bandages for Zalata. And we're going to have to say bye to Bruno. So now we'll draw a fate card. Let's grab this one. Raise the illness of all ill characters who do not take meds, herbal meds by one. So nobody's ill, we're fine. Heal the wounds of all characters who have bandages by one. Discard bandages tokens from all characters. So... We've got Zalata, who has the bandages. She'll go down to one wound, which is great. Oops, but then we lose these bandages. You know what it doesn't say? is people who are wounded gets increased by one. So Bruno is still around. Nice. And you guys, I always forget to show you this. They all increased their fatigue by one. Bruno is going to be the one, or actually, yeah, yeah, it's Bruno. Bruno's going to go to fatigue two. Everyone else will be at fatigue one. If cold tokens minus board ups equals one, and it does equal one or more, we've got four cold tokens and three board ups. Raise the illness of one chosen character by one. Yeah, well, we know who that's going to be. Bruno is now going to get ill, which makes sense. I mean, he's really wounded. He's really fatigued. And now he's ill. Exchange the nearest small location. There are no small locations. So I don't think anything is going to change. Okay. Resolve weight tokens, none. Spirit C needs to be resolved on each character. We'll start with Marin. Marin, if he is miserable level two or three, wow, I got really lucky there. Remember, he rolled the six, otherwise he would start becoming ill. So we don't have to worry about him. For Bruno, if Bruno is wounded, raise his misery by one. So Bruno is going to go to a two. Ow. Zolata, though, can lower two chosen characters' misery by one. So she'll lower uh, Marin's misery to zero and Zalata's misery to zero. Oh, that's awesome. Because guess what? She's just comforting. Even if she's wounded, she's still comforting. And Aritza, no effect. So nothing we need to worry about. 
Okay, let's draw our two narrative cards. So we either can keep Handyman. Play at any time, automatically exchange a broken item for its fully functional equivalent without using any resource tokens. Whoa, that's so cool. We've got that guitar. We could do that with that. Let's see. And here's the second one. Headshot. Play during any combat. If you are using a firearm, discard one ammo to automatically kill one enemy. Or play during the night raid phase. If the character on guard duty has a firearm, discard one ammo to automatically ignore one raid. Okay. I mean, this is cool, but I'm not even going to ask you guys because I'm going for the headshot. And the reason for that is because I'm just going to do the next day right now as well. So I'll get these two videos out ASAP. Well, we just finished end of day six. Bruno is not looking good, but everyone else looks okay. I mean, no misery really other than Bruno and just a little fatigue and one wound. And I still do have another set of bandages. So I'm feeling okay. I just got to get over the fact that Bruno might not last very long. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next episode for day seven. <laughs>